Another way to use colors is to use part colors, color by parts. At the moment, all the events are all grayish, but let me set up a few colors for you. I will close this editor and cut this part into a few bits and change the color of some of them. Set this one in red and so on. Now we've got um, eight different parts or nine different parts with different colors. You can edit a few parts at the same time by just selecting all of them and going for edit on the edit menu or by pressing Control E on the keyboard. This is what I'll do now. I'll leave the menu, I'll press Control E on the keyboard and it brings up the MIDI editor again. The first few notes are in red, the next few notes are in green, these are blue, these are yellow, turquoise, violet, and so on. By the way, only the parts that are um, um, active appear in, in strong colors. All the other ones are fainted. Now the, the violet ones are, are active. Now the turquoise ones are active. Now the yellow ones are active. But you can still get hold of um, all of them like this. You could just select all of these here. And if you wanted to, you could move them up or down together. Just like that. And do, if you don't want to um, leave them there, you could just press Ctrl Z or go for the edit menu and do undo move. Here's the shortcut, Ctrl Z, and they go back again to where they were before. Before we go into the nitty gritty bits of um, opening and closing editors, let's have a look at the fundamentals of closing and opening all editors in Cubase, especially when it comes to making changes and then de deciding whether you want to keep the changes or um, disregarding the changes. If I, for example, delete these four notes at the beginning of my tune and I then want to keep the changes, all I need to do is press the Enter key on the keyboard and get back to my arrangement. Go back into my editor again. If I, for example, delete some of my notes here and then decide that I don't want to keep the changes, I can press the Escape key on the keyboard and then Cubase comes up with this dialog box asking me whether I want to cancel all the changes that I've made in the editor, i.e. I've deleted these bits here, or whether I want to keep the changes and um, go ahead with closing the window. So let's say I want to the changes. I click yes. The editor closes. I'll open it again and presto, I've still got my, my notes which I deleted in the first place. So this is a very good way if you, for example, work on a tune and you change a lot of things, um, i.e. you delete lots of nodes or you change the position of the nodes and you, then you play it back and you think, oh, this is not quite right. All you need to do is, instead of pressing the return key, all you need to do is press the escape key on the keyboard, then hit the return key for yes and open up the editor again just to make sure that it's all back to what it was in the first place. If you delete these, for example, hit the escape key and then select no, and then open it again. It took it as, as a normal close, close and save option, and um, you're left with no more notes in the middle. This principle applies to all editors, whether it's the drum editor, the list editor, the audio editor, the master track window, the score, and so on. Okay, let's close this one and carry on with the with the important parts of the editor. Let's look at the main skills you need with the editors. So I'll create a new track, a new part, mute this one, open this part. Let's start with the pencil. With the pencil you can draw notes into the editor. The snap value determines where you can place the notes. Now I can only place 8th notes, even though I'm on a 16th note here. 
and the quant value determines how long the notes are. The pencil has to be inside one of those fields and it depends a little bit on where you are as well. If you're closer to the next eighth note, like now for example, oops, let's do another example. If you're closer to the next eighth note, the note is being placed. And afterwards, and if you're closer to the first one, it's being placed there. This is going to be even better visible if I go down to quarter notes. Snap and quant. See this? I'm on the. This is the next one in B at power 5, and I'm just in front of that one. So, depending on where you are. Create notes. If you want to create longer notes, you can just keep your mouse button pressed and then create longer notes. And here again, I'm letting off, letting go here now. And the note becomes a dotted minim. I let go there, and I'll end up with a um, whole note. Once you've drawn the notes in, you can obviously play them. I hit one for the for the cursor to go to the left locator. You can very quickly change the values of the snap and quant field by pressing on the keyboard where the letters are, just above the letters, the, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 8. Yep. And if you press 1, you can draw in whole notes. You can draw in whole notes. If you press 2, you can draw in minims. Press 3, quarter notes. Four are eighth notes. And you might be able to see here in bar 3, beat 1, 1 and, 2, 2 and, 3, 3 and, 4, 4 and. And I'll switch the view to 16th notes. That one. If you press 5, you get to the 16th nodes, and you can see that each of those 8th nodes contains two 16th nodes, and which you can also draw in as well. Let's delete all the nodes involved. I press Ctrl A to select all of them, hit the delete key, make the um, zoom setting a bit larger, and um, I'll switch on to eighth notes. Here are the eighth notes. Like that. And like that. But this time I'd like you to have a look at triplets. You can quickly switch on the triplets by pressing T. And you can see that for each beat, this is beat 2 for example, you've got three notes here. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, and so on. And you can join the notes. You could just copy this bit, copy it, and depending on where your cursor position is, just paste. See that? I'll just double click wherever I want my cursor to go to. Hit paste again, Control V is the paste command, standard Windows paste command, and I'll end up with a few triplets. Let's delete those notes again, and let's have a look at the trip at the um, dotted notes. I just press the um, the colon on the key. It's just um, when you get to the bottom row, you've got B N M 
comma, colon, just before you get to the forward slash. That's where I've got the colon. And um, you can see we've got dotted nodes now. These are dotted eighth nodes. And if we switch it over to dotted quarter nodes, he might be able to see a little bit better if I draw in a dotted quarter node. This node is here is one beat and a half long. The next one is a beat and a half long. And the last one is just a beat and a half again. But for each bar, the counting starts from the beginning and then this last note always just overlaps into the next bar because of its length. But as you can see, there isn't really um, a snap setting down here, for example. Let's delete these notes again. Control A, delete. I'll press a 4 button and I'll press the colon again to get rid of the dotted function. See, now we're in dotted again, dotted eighth notes. And now I'll press the colon again for standard eighth notes again.